From the land of frozen lakes, this is 10,000 Takes, brought to you by Minnesota Score Radio. Wally and Eric back for yet another week as we slice and dice the always busy, always topical, super saturated Twin Cities sports scene. And Wally, normally we're on the radio, yes, but we do make occasional appearances on television. So yet another episode as we close out February and get into March. Yeah, and well, we march into March with... Plenty to talk about. Uh, you know, the baseball negotiations continue. <laughs> Whether or not they're going to start playing in April or when is up for grabs. And, uh, you know, the Wild, the Gophers, all kinds of stuff going on. State tournaments going on. Girls State Hockey Tournament just ended. So. Well, I think you could say that March and October are your two hyper-busy months for sports. You have just basically everything going on. And can't leave out the shield. The oh. combine starts on uh, March first. Oh, and Indy. We'll get into that later. You're I gonna know. force chomping at the bit. Yeah, to talk about you're gonna that. force me to talk about that, <laughs> aren't you? All right, let's start with Major League Baseball since we brought it up right off the top, um, and the negotiations continue. And you know, you've heard all the sayings, millionaires and billionaires, but it's owners against workers. I mean, yeah, yep. they make a lot of money, but that's what it is. Do you think that the owners really? care to give in on any of these things? I mean, do do they care enough? Because, look, the owners know that they're going to make money regardless of what happens here. It's just how much are they going to make. Right, although I think from the uh, ownership perspective, if you look at 2020, the COVID season, where you only had 60 games in the regular season, um, they certainly lost revenue there. (laughs) You didn't have ballparks. You didn't have fans last year. We had, uh, you know, COVID capacities that were limited, and finally things opened up around the middle of the season, depending on what city you were talking about. Right. But, um, look, Gary Trent, who used to play for the Timberwolves and uh, NBA guy for a long time, his kid now plays for the Toronto Raptors, he told me a long time ago that whenever you have the billionaires and the millionaires, the billionaires can afford to wait it out longer. They can just cut mm-hmm. the water off in the river, and eventually the millionaires get thirsty. So to your point... The owners can wait this out. They're billionaires. Uh, Even Max Scherzer is not a billionaire, right? And he will lose $25,000 per game (laughs) if they lose any games in MLB. How about that? uh, That's that's not Per game. That's not good. That's what you make in a week. (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, Yeah, okay. (laughs) Says you. Uh, Okay. There are several issues still on the table. And, again, most of them are financial issues. I I mean, I think, you know, we talk about the – the in-game issues, we talk about the, you know, the DH and the extra innings thing and all those type of things that you and I might care about mm-hmm. because they affect the actual mm-hmm. baseball game that we're watching. But what they're arguing about really is all about the money. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think, too, uh, whether you're a hardcore fan or a fringe fan, there's a lot of minutia here that we don't care about. Right. And here's what I think Major League Baseball on both sides, players and owners, needs to be aware of. I don't sense a lot of anger about this now. Now, granted, we're you know there haven't been any regular season games lost yet. We've lost some spring training games though. A lot of people from Minnesota want to flock down to Absolutely. Southwest Florida, get out of this cold, get into the heat. And there's other fan bases that feel the same way. So I feel bad for Arizona and Florida. Spring training is a cash cow for those markets. They're taking an economic gut punch. But beyond that, look. Baseball can get eclipsed by the other sports. March Madness coming up. MLS just kicked (laughs) off with soccer. Uh, The Combine, you can laugh at it, but they're going to garner headlines. You've got the NBA and NHL finally starting to gain some steam where it becomes interesting. So Major League Baseball, I'm sensing apathy. Does anybody care? Yeah. Well, they won't care until April rolls around, at least for the majority of the United States. You're right. Arizona and Florida for sure. I mean, they're they're going to be hurting because they don't get that it's revenue. A body blow. There's You've no, been down there. No I question. have too. And these cities rely on spring training, and the restaurants fill up, and the bars fill up, and you know, spring training is a great thing. The players are a little more accessible, and that that's tough because this is the third straight year now where it has not been a normal spring training. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Let's switch things up here a little bit. Um, the Minnesota Wild kind of in a, uh, a funk right now. They've lost five of their last six, three in a row. That The Canadian tour was not very good. They won the first one and then lost the last three, um, including a 7-3 drubbing to Calgary over the weekend. And then on top of it, they get Calgary again on Tuesday night. So 
Um, where is this team at right now? I, they're giving up a boatload of goals. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, goaltending because they're rotating their goalies, Capo Kakinen and Cam Talbot. And even though Cam Talbot made the All-Star game, if you have two goalies, do you really have one? I mean, you need one yeah. stud you can rely on. So I'm skeptical of that. I know it's not just goaltending. Well, you make, like to point out that defense also gets some of the blame. Yeah, and I think that the other thing is, is that I think Dean Evison's trying to find the right formula right now in that in the Nets. And he, but but again, if you're going to go deep in the Stanley Cup playoffs, you don't have to be a hockey Einstein to know. If you don't have a stud goalie, you're not going anywhere. No, that's true. Look at the teams that make the runs. Look at the St. Louis Blues a few years ago, and and how they they relied on goaltending and. Um, the yeah. LA Kings with Corey uh, or, or Jonathan Quick and Corey Crawford in Chicago. You got to have it. I don't know if the Wild do. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Uh, and and the, there's one other issue we should bring up before we uh, dismiss the hockey talk. Um, the United States, of course, is the home to the NHL along with Canada. And there's talk from one of its <laughs> former stars in the NHL, Dominic Hasek, that Maybe we shouldn't have Canadian or we shouldn't have Russian players in the NHL. They the uh, they should be penalized. Well, that's the last thing the Wild want. You got Kirill Kaprizov. I mean, he's your best player. No question. And and Hasek has a, you know he's got a Hall of Fame voice. So when he speaks, people are going to listen. But he was directing a lot of his venom toward Alexander Ovechkin, the superstar in Washington, also from Russia, who has publicly said he voted for Alexander Putin. But I, I disagree with Hasek. I I can't hold these players. Uh, you know, to blame for what a, a dictator is doing invading the Ukraine. I certainly don't endorse it, but it would be very unfair to say, hey, Kirill Kaprizov, you're out. And not only that, it would harpoon the Wilds' chances of doing anything this yeah. season. I don't want to go down that road. It's a slippery slope. We did it to the Japanese way back in the day in World War II in California, and that was a, that was a dark moment in U.S. history. I'm not saying we'd go there here with this, but... I stay away from it. Yeah, well, the NHL uh, has some issues to deal with, that's for sure. And they've got, they got a lot of Eastern European players, so this is going to have a direct effect on uh, what it goes on. It could split locker rooms, though. Ooh. It could you right? know, foster some acrimony. You're Absolutely. right about that. All right, a lot more coming up. We're going to talk some soccer with Manny Lago, sporting director for Menu. Stick around. This is 10K Takes, your Pucks ticket. Thinking about buying or refinancing a home? Then you should be talking to Dave Jensen and Cross Country Mortgage at MortgagesByDave.com. When you come to Dave, he begins by listening and can offer you a home loan that's right for you. Whether you're a first-time buyer or a long-time homeowner, Mortgages by Dave will be with you every step of the way. So whether you're buying or refinancing, apply online at MortgagesByDave.com or call and he'll answer at 612-384-3283. Online at MortgagesByDave.com. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. Maya? Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Welcome back. 10,000 takes. Wally and Eric with you. And we are going to shift gears and talk some soccer now. Minu, Minnesota United. They got underway this past weekend. They earned a 1-1 draw at Philadelphia. And we are joined now by their sporting director, Manny Lagos. And Manny... Uh, I guess when you go into Philadelphia, no matter whether it's uh, football, hockey, <laughs> even baseball for that matter, uh, when you come out with a point, you got to be happy. Very happy. You know, it, it is a tough place to play. I, I think um, over the last three years, and I had a chance to talk to their head coach after the game, I think they felt like that was one of the best away performances against them. We, we really had a lot of good chances to win the game. We were up for a decent amount of the game um, and really had two good chances late. And like I said, first game of the year, you're still unsure. We're still going to build on what we're going to be as a team. But certainly, uh, we played a really good game defensively. We played a good game offensively. We created a lot of chances. So I, I thought it was a good start to the season. You've got to be happy with Robin Lode, who led Menu with nine goals last season. He got the goal in Philly. Uh, he's a guy that probably looks more like a hockey player, but he gets it done on the pitch, doesn't he? 
Yeah, he, he's got these soft feet. He's so skilled. You know, he looks like a, a big guy that wouldn't be very fast, but he, he's cleverly, uh, you know, quick. Uh, and he's got such soft feet that when he gets in the box and he gets his chances with either foot, but particularly his left foot in the box, he'll finish it. And he, he's shown that consistently now for two years. Uh, the game in Philly where we started, you know, they came at us really tough for, for about 15 minutes. And then we really started to take over possession, started to create chances, started to kind of take over the field battle a little bit. And we had a great run in the box by uh, our Argentine winger, Fragapani. Great run by our new Paraguayan forward to kind of take a near post run. Ball goes to Robin at the penalty spot. And he just, you know, again, he's the kind of guy that if you get him a chance in the box like that, he's going to finish it. And this is a Philadelphia team that has aspirations of being a postseason team that can make a run for sure. Um, and you got help despite the fact you had four starters out. Uh, Kervin Ariaga came in, the, the Honduran who came in last minute. Explain what happened there. It was like this guy shows up like minutes before uh, <laughs> things were going to start. And I don't know if, if uh, Coach Heath knew whether or not he was going to have him. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. You know, um, the, the challenges of global soccer and, and how you get players from all the world to come. And once they're here, they have to get cleared to have a visa to play because that's how you pay them. And to pay them, that means they're officially working for you. And then you have to get cleared by this inter, inter, international transfer system which is run by fifa so those two elements usually take you know anywhere from three weeks sometimes for the visa but then another week for the transfer system and when we left on friday in our charter flight we were uh had them fly but we thought for sure we wouldn't get through because it had to be done at five friday at five uh by the time we landed in philly um his visa was cleared and then we we did some good work with the uh, federation uh for him to kind of be cleared with Honduras to make sure he's available Saturday. So it was a last minute. And then Adrian Heath also had to make the decision when he wanted to start him, uh, which turned out to be a great decision because he had a great game. Yeah. Manny, speaking of Honduras, are, are you getting hate emails from that <laughs> Central American country after they were forced to play on that frozen pitch in early February? I think it was the coldest soccer match in the history of North America. It was about five degrees. I mean, that was a, a test of the wills, wasn't it? It, it was. I mean, it was a special night for Minnesota soccer. The global eyes were on Minnesota. Obviously, it was such a unique experience for, you know, we, we've done these events for hockey outside, and, and our fans always seem to show up and embrace it. We just didn't know if they are going to do it for a soccer game, and they came, and it, it was rocking. I actually got to be a fan that night. I took my son. I was outside, and, um, you know, I always look at those moments where you can just be a Minnesotan for all our sports. You know, going to our great hockey events outside have always been great, but to do it for soccer – uh, was unbelievable. I know the Hondurans were were on the field were a little bit overwhelmed. I think, but even our our players aren't from Minnesota, so they had to, they had to kind of absorb it as well. So, uh, we do have two Honduran players on the team, and I would say, you know, it's interesting that everybody we recruit here. It's I say it all the time. It's for all our sports, all our companies. It's always tough these months. It's always tough to get them excited about what Minnesota is and our amazing four seasons. But once we get through this winter. 90% of our roster has already been through it. They love it. So they tell them to get the new guys. They say, hey, if you can fight through these next couple months, it's a beautiful uh, spring, summer, fall here. Um, and certainly our two Hondurans are, are experiencing the cold for the first time uh, and experiencing that game as well. Well, they will uh, experience some form of cold on Saturday when you open up at home um, against Nashville. Uh, I would suspect that you're going to have a full house and the temperatures will be a little warmer than they were a few weeks ago <laughs> when you hosted the Honduran team at the Allianz Field. Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, listen, I, I, the, the miracles of what our grounds crew to get us open for February 2nd for that game was, was unbelievable. I mean, just to have grass grown in February makes no sense to me, but, you know, we, we've got a nice uh, heated system underneath the grass we have grow lights. They have a tarping system that they use, and they, they also, I think, also kind of blow the air to try to get it where the sun is going down, stuff above my pay grade. But ultimately, <laughs> I think they work their butts off to have a great, great time. And I, I, ultimately for us, it's, it's an old home opener, and our fans are going to be out. They're going to be rocking. And, you know, one of the things I have a source of pride is all the sports and the stadiums we have here, and then now the addition of Allianz Field being one of these just amazing sports environment experiences that – I think our fan base is excited to get going on that. Obviously, last year, uh, the second half of the year was really special because the fans were back, but we had the COVID year. And, and ultimately, I still think fans are, are just starting to ramp up to really get excited. So I, I think it's going to be a great moment Saturday night. 
Um, I think Nashville is a really tough team. They got a big away win in Seattle, uh, which is always one of the best teams in the league. Uh, so we know we're going to have a, a big game ahead of us on Saturday, but I think it's going to be rocking. I think, I think yeah. the fans are ready of what we've gone through all the last two years to really get outside and, and no matter what the weather is, cheer on the team. And Manny, some people have called Allianz Field a, a soccer cathedral. It really is a wonderful venue. <laughs> and, and you want to go back to, you know, last fall, Carly Lloyd comes into the Twin Cities, her final appearance for the U.S. women's national team. That was an epic moment. Then you had the, you know, the game on the frozen pitch we just talked about. And you've got the MLS All-Star game in August. And rumor has it, it might actually be hot for that game. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be all right, hopefully. Let's knock on wood. But, yeah, it, it's been such a cool couple of years. Um, you know, certainly my my pride with the national team games, both the men's and women's now, we've had uh, three or four over. No goals scored against us as a country. So uh, my, my U.S. pride comes out that, you know, we were tough, we're resolute Minnesotans, and we our national team played that way in the games that they've played here already. Um, I, I think the August 10th one is another example of the community again, of the Twin Cities, our ability to attract top-tier events, you know, Final Fours, Super Bowls, um, you know, obviously um, – we just do a great job of it. I think it's the combination of our community, our corporate involvement, and I know the, the week that the world will be on us for the All-Star Game, it's going to be awesome because ultimately, like you said, we've got the community, we've got the corporate kind of uh, ability to really make it a great event, and then we also have the stadium. And this stadium is, is, is presents itself and presents soccer in such a cool way. It's going to be a great night. Uh, another major soccer question that is brewing right now across the across the globe, really, is uh, the World Cup. And several teams have now said that they will not play Russia. They either won't go to Russia or they will not play them. Um, what's your view? I mean, you, you intermingle with a lot of international folks uh, in the world of soccer. What's, what's the view from the, from the MLS version? Well, I think the view is... Um it's, it's obviously a, a tragic time. Anytime you have a war and you have the kind of situation and issues we have, uh, they're bigger than soccer. And, and there's certainly things that have to be decided that are outside the scope of our sport. Um, I, I would say, you know, at the end of the day, it's probably too early to decide what's going to happen with FIFA and with the World Cup. Um, certainly, you know, we, we, we as a league, uh, you know, are, are aware. And I think, you know, we had a moment of silence. Uh, before our Philly game, uh, you know, where we wanted to really pay respect to the, the war and what's going on in Ukraine. Um, and ultimately, well, the eyes are on it. My, my view is, you know, you, you look at Minnesota United and one of our purposes is to inspire and, and unite this community through soccer. And, and, you know, I think we do that. We try to live that by those values every day. I think on a bigger scale, you just hope that FIFA and, and the world game of soccer can think about ways that you can create and unite this great world through soccer as well. Uh, and certainly when you have a global event like the World Cup, um, those kind of things have to be looked at and measured. And I'm sure over the coming months, they'll think about what's appropriate for that situation. Yeah. All right, Manny, good stuff. We appreciate awesome. you spending some time with us. Uh, good luck on Saturday night. I know you're looking forward to it. And temperatures, it's uh, rumored to be in the 30s, so that's a heat wave. Oh, yeah. Well, if it's in the 30s, we're ready to go. But either way, like I said, the, the, what I've learned is – you know, the players will embrace whatever because we have to do it. And our fans, you know, we saw it February 2nd. We've seen it for the last couple of years. Um, they're out. They're ready to get there for us. So I, I bet you bring it. your sunblock Saturday. That's my prediction. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, it's a night game, by the way. <laughs> uh, well, it's staying daylight a little long. It's a 5 o'clock 5 p.m. Yeah, yeah, that's late. So. late yeah, that's crazy. All right. Half and yeah. half. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Manny. He is Manny Lago, Good sporting guys. director for Minnesota United. Eric and I will be back with more right here on 10,000 Takes. Stay with us. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. Maya? Oh, I love your earrings. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Ten K takes, and it was a good news, bad news weekend. If you're a Gopher fan, uh, let's start out with the good. Bob Motzkow's men's hockey team 
Big Ten champions for the first time under his tutelage. Um, you know, obviously they had some great runs with uh, Don Lucia, but now Bob Motzkow has got them in the win column as far as Big Ten titles. Yeah, and this is where people thought Bob Motzkow would take the Gophers. That's five Big Ten titles now in nine years of Big Ten hockey. So Minnesota's had success winning the conference. I know Ben Myers had a big night, I believe, on Friday. They crushed Wisconsin. And they got help from Notre Dame, which swept Michigan. So the stars aligned for Minnesota. But that's good. Now you have to have this translate into the postseason. Right. Get to the Frozen Four and uh, you know win it all. Have a parade in Dinky Town. Not not a riot. Oh, a please. parade. Oh please. Okay. <laughs> all right. Flip side of this is uh, Gopher men's basketball. Uh, they lost to Wisconsin in the middle of last week, Wednesday night. I was there for that, and then I was there on Sunday uh, when they lost to Indiana. Now, mind you, they were down by 27 points to Indiana. They chipped it all the way down to three towards the end of the game, ended up losing by five points to Indiana. But this is a team that's not going anywhere. They won't even go to the NIT um, unless they make a strong run here in their last few games. They go to Maryland this week, and then they have to uh, you know, eventually get into that Big Ten tournament. If they win two or three games in the Big Ten tournament, you know, I guess that the NIT would probably come knocking. But unless that happens, and it does not look like that's going to happen, um, year one is going to be in the books for them, and it's going to be around a 500 season. Yeah. Fast start, ten yeah. and one, had some road wins. You know, Mississippi State, Pittsburgh, right. at Michigan. Uh, you know that got folks excited. Maybe hey, they would overachieve, but they've limped to the finish line. There's yeah. no doubt about it. There's no moral victories at the Big Ten level. Ben Johnson will be the first guy to tell you that. So I think now he's got a taste of coaching at the Big Ten level, and right. uh, they'll roll up their sleeves, hit the recruiting trail, and they got to get better next season. Yeah, and they've got. You know, they've got Jamison Battle coming back. Now, the rest of that starting lineup was all seniors. And my biggest criticism of Ben, and Ben's done, you know, I think Ben's done a really good job in year one for the most part. But I think um, my number one criticism was get, get some of these guys some playing time, you know, some of these bench guys. I was surprised that... That, that the seniors had to play every minute of, you know, at least these last few games. You know, I'd, I'd like to see some of these guys come off the bench and get some more minutes, the younger guys. You know, once you know that it's basically over as far as making any kind of a postseason run, I think it would be wise to move that direction. So, anyway. All right. Um, I know you've been itching to talk about this. This is this is Eric's absolute yeah. favorite topic and my least favorite topic. The NFL Combine, the NFL Olympics coming up uh, this uh, week, all week long. I know you're going to be glued to I, your set. I just like to barbecue this thing because <laughs> I, I think it's total paralysis by analysis. So you got a kid who excelled on Saturdays at the D1 level, and he's still got to show up in Indianapolis and show the scouts and the coaches how many times he can bench press 225 pounds, run that 40, <laughs> do the cone drills, do the vertical jump. And then, of course, there's the character stuff where they sit down and ask you questions. Some of it is just way off the Wonderlick charts. So, uh, look, you got to put some weight on the combine. I mean, everybody goes there. Sure. The new Minnesota Vikings regime is down in Indy. Yep. But don't overweight it. It still comes down to can the guy play football. But I will tell you this. Indianapolis has had it for 35 years. This could be the final year in Indy. The NFL is shopping this event. Oh, boy. Minneapolis might get it someday. What I do know is <laughs> they've got it down to the final three for 2023. It's either going to be in Indy, Los Angeles, or Dallas-Fort Worth, the Metroplex. But I have a feeling the Twin Cities will want this event at some point. My, and you'll be the grand marshal oh, yeah. of the combine parade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My money is on L.A., oh, by the way. All right. Uh, oh, wow. On that note, <laughs> we need to take one more break. When we come back, takes of the day right here on 10,000 Takes, your combine ticket. <laughs> Thinking about buying or refinancing a home? Then you should be talking to Dave Jensen and Cross Country Mortgage at MortgagesByDave.com. When you come to Dave, he begins by listening and can offer you a home loan that's right for you. Whether you're a first-time buyer or a long-time homeowner, Mortgages by Dave will be with you every step of the way. So whether you're buying or refinancing, apply online at MortgagesByDave.com or call and he'll answer at 612-384-3283. Online at MortgagesByDave.com. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. <laughs> My 
Maya. Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Ten K takes on television as we wrap it up. Yet another week, almost in the books. But we have to talk about takes of the day. We're going to find out if Wally is a grumpy guardian, a giddy guardian, angry American. Maybe he's a happy camper. What is it today? Well, if I'm a viewer of uh, sports on television, especially the local version, uh, and I don't have cable, I still have trouble. And the Major League Baseball season is just around the corner. Uh, no, we don't have baseball yet, but that's going to come eventually. The Wild, the Wolves, both probably on the march towards the postseason. But you still can't watch them unless you have cable. Most of the streaming services don't carry Bally Sports North. So the negotiations, and I don't even know if those are even going on <laughs> anymore, between the Sinclair Group, which now owns all the Bally Sports properties, and these uh, streaming services. Do you have Sling? Do you have, I don't know, AT&T, any one of those? I know AT&T had it for a while, but or, or YouTube. or I mean, there's a bunch of them out there, but you can't watch it unless you have cable. And that has got to somehow end at some point so people can watch. I mean, the teams have to be furious. And if they don't find a solution to this, if I'm the Minnesota Twins, I start knocking on the door of over-the-air carriers, Channel 23, uh, you know, Channel 9, whoever. Get in on this. Go to the, one of these stations and say, look, we need to put these things on over the air like the Loons did one year ago when they weren't able to get their games on cable because of the same thing or on Bally because of the same thing. And the mood meter says grumpy guardian. I think that's appropriate. And you better just learn to get outside. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be glued to the tube. Well, there's that. <laughs> As I tell people watching us on the television. <laughs> on cable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see where it goes. It's, it's not good if you're a local sports no. fan for sure. It's been going on forever, this um, debate. I've got some more gloom and doom. Uh-oh. <laughs> you're all Well, some that. people might like this. My take, uh, last week... House Democrats reintroduced a bill that would not allow teams to get tax money for sports venues. It's called the No Tax Subsidies for Stadiums Act. And basically, since Y2K, the year 2000, 57 stadiums have been built and 42 got some sort of uh, you know, tax breaks. Now, throw arenas into the mix and, and the number even grows more. So... The Minnesota Timberwolves, we know at some point in time, Mark Lurie and A-Rod oh, yes. are going to go to the St. Paul and say, hey, Governor Tibwalls and the House and the, you know, the Senate, we need money for this upgraded arena. We've got to be state-of-the-art <laughs> like Seattle or what they're building in Los Angeles for the Clippers, a billion-dollar wow. arena next to SoFi. So this bill would say no, no mas. And so that means like Target Field and U.S. Bank Stadium, they got in at just the right time. So we'll see if it passes, but you know the owners of professional sports teams in North America can't be happy about this bill. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, well, the owners of professional sports teams are uh, they're on the hot seat right now in many respects, not just baseball. I think that, that goes along <laughs> the lines of just about every sport. Yeah, I don't know too many people who shed tears for billionaires, no. whether they own teams or <laughs> no. they own corporations. Yeah, they're doing actually, just fine. I was actually glad to see this because it will probably not uh, help the Kansas City Royals at all. They want tax money for a downtown ballpark. I'm like, stay in Kansas City where you're at next to Arrowhead. It's a great situation. Yeah, it really is. All right. Rocky is waving at us. Yeah. He says, let's go. Let's, let's FedEx out those thank yous. <laughs> One to Rocky. Of course, the great crew here at MCN6. For Wally and Manny Lagos, I'm Eric Nelson saying this is 10K Takes, your sports ticket.